not not a licensed physician, not giving medical advice. It's purely educational and for entertainment. I'm also not really in the mood for this video. But I was looking at my list of videos I still need to bring to you. And one of them is how damage to your body, to your organism, may not be immediately apparent. It's going to show up later in life. Now, why is that? That's because when you're young and you're healthy, your body can compensate for a lot. For example, you could get nerve damage, but your body can use... Imagine you had all these nerves going to something. Just trying to get the best background. Black is the best. But imagine now that two of them die, so you got less nerves. Well, if you're young and you're healthy, your body can grow more little nerves from the existing ones. But you know what that means? That means now it only takes one of those main ones to die, and now you just lost 50% of the innervation. It only takes two of them to die, and you just lost 100% of the innervation. Whereas if you had never got that original damage, one of them dies, you only lost a quarter of the innervation. Two of them die, you only lost half of the innervation. That's a big, massive difference. That is the difference between you got nerve damage when you're young and you didn't get nerve damage when you're young. When you're young, you got all those extra connections coming off. It feels like you got all this because you got extra ones coming off there. But as you get older and you age and you get more damage and things, you know, that's when it shows up. Very often, you get some sort of damage when you're young, but other systems in your body or the system that's damaged itself can, comp well, once again, compensate for the damage that happened. Uh, yeah. It's not complicated. I was, I'm thinking maybe I should say more about it, but it's, it's really not complicated. So that is why you should be careful to not get too much damage when you're young, because when you're young, you feel like nothing damages you. Like, oh, I just healed from it. It's like, you know, everything has a cost. Even if you heal perfectly. Like, even if somehow you had these nerves, these two died, and you regrew those. Your cells in your body now, kind of in a way, they have infinite potential, infinite ability to divide. But in reality, they tend not to. So say... I'm going to use a different example. You cut your muscle. Well, actually, muscle is not the best example because muscle cells have some of the best ability to keep making more. Um, let's say you cut your throat or your mouth or something. And let's just use general tissue. Let's say you damage a certain tissue in your body. Let's say you have a hundred cells and you damage 10 of them. Well, the other ones can, well, it, it depends where exactly you're damaging. So let's make an even more general example. You have a lot of cells and your body has the ability to make more cells to repair damage, but that ability is not infinite. Your cells, which are stem cells or stem-like cells, which have the ability to divide and make other cells that can become different types of cells, or sometimes it's just a cell that can make more of a certain type, like stem-like cells. Um, but basically, you have cells that can make more cells that you need. But the thing is, they can't do that infinitely. So you get a certain amount of damage, and you know, your cells make more cells. They replace the ones that got damaged, and you think, everything's great. I got damaged, I'm completely healed, it's like nothing ever happened. And in a way, it is. Because at that moment, you have everything you need. But if it happens again, well now, your, body, your cells need to make more cells, and it's like nothing ever happened. Except those cells that make more cells are slowly exhausting themselves. Now, there are ways to extend the life of those cells, but 
for the most part. Especially if you're not doing special advanced medical things to yourself, which you probably aren't. Those cells get exhausted. So this is kind of, this is a different example than the one I did with the nerves. Um, so even if there's no compensation in the sense that I did with the nerve example, even if something fully recovers, you lose the future ability to fully recover eventually. Uh, different tissues have different abilities. Like I said, muscle tissue has a great ability to get damaged and to make more. kind of ties into another topic, which is cancer, which one cause of cancer is just repeated damage. Because if you damage something, it can be fixed, but it's going to have some little problems, at least some of the time. So if you damage it repeatedly, you're going to accumulate problems. And eventually, you're going to accumulate enough problems that it causes cancer. So yeah, you, you could literally just scratch an area every single day or every minute. I don't know how often you have to do it, but you just scratch the same area of skin and eventually you're likely to get cancer there. Because repeated damage, like I said, leads to problems, errors. Uh, the cell is not fully repaired. It's not gonna function 100% how it should, at least not all of the time when it's repaired, but even if it's even if it were to be completely, perfectly repaired 80% of the time, well, you still got that 20% of the time that if you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, it's going to build up. Looks like I'm blurry on the screen, but maybe I'm not. So yeah, for many reasons, when you're young or when you first start to take on damage, you will seem and you may basically fully recover from it uh, so i guess there's kind of two situations like the first one and the second one i guess so either you compensate or you do fully recover but either way even if you compensate eventually those compensor compensatory mechanisms are going to diminish as you get older and things are going to fail faster um, and even if you fully recovered you're going to lose your future ability to fully recover. Now, how can you get around this? Well, because those are two different things, once again, so two different ways you'd have to get around them, uh, both actually tying into the same thing. Uh, complex to just do as a little segment of this video, so I will g very generalize it also. I don't know exactly how to fix everything. That is what I'm going to be doing in the future in my life. Um, but yeah, cells have the potential to infinitely create new potential. We just need to unlock that potential, but it's complicated. Now, something I take, I'm not trying to promote it, I, I actually am not even that confident that it works. It's a Soviet Union medication called Epitalon, which um, I think I had originally misunderstood the medical studies, and that it's actually synthetic peptide that mimics the activity of the natural uh, pineal peptide. Either way, it's a peptide which, in Soviet Union medical studies, was shown to elongate telomeres and allow cells to divide more times than usual. Uh, medical official term, it's to surpass the high fat limit. Uh, just means that normally cells divide a certain number of times on average before they can't divide anymore and these ones did it more. But what also interests me is that it was shown to basically open up so DNA gets twisted up and closed and stuff as you get older or as issues happen and it's not able to read out and create the things it's, it needs to create for everything in your body to work properly. It was also shown to open up that DNA and allow it to operate more properly like it did when it was younger. Other studies showed that old people who took this, I think it was like three month cycles, 
think it was like 20 micrograms a day for three months. I don't remember exactly. Um, but it showed that they had a massive decrease in all age-related illnesses over the next like five or ten years. Now, all of those studies combined looked like good enough reason for me to take it. Now, there is still downsides to it, which is shortening of telomeres, for example, and the stopping of your cells at a certain age or whatever you want to call it after they've divided a certain number of times is one natural mechanism for stopping cancer because as i mentioned about damage damage accumulates over time and over damage uh, the more the more time a cell is alive the more likely it is to get damaged so if you keep your cells alive much longer they're much more likely to get damaged and you're more likely to get cancer to me that's kind of like well that's a good price to pay for staying alive longer it's like would you live a thousand years knowing that over the course of a thousand years you're more likely to get enough damage to cause cancer? It's like, or would you rather just die after eight years? I think I would take my chances living a thousand years and getting that damage and dealing with the problems that arise than just giving up. Just how I am. Now, is it the best decision for me to make right now? I don't know. Only time will tell. I mean, time probably won't even tell that much because you can't predict what would happen. Like, even medical studies are greatly flawed because they take one group of people and compare them to another group of people. They're like, oh, we gave this group of people this thing. We didn't give that group of people this. And this is what happened. Well, those are two different people. Well, peoples. You cannot copy a person. Well, I mean, you can clone a person uh, I mean, if, if you don't believe that for some reason we can clone every other organism on Earth except for people, which is the official narrative. But yeah, you would have to pretty much clone people and do medical studies on clones to really know what happens when you do something and what happens when you don't do something. Because doing it with two completely genetically different people doesn't tell you what would happen to each other. It only tells you what happens to that one person not what would happen to the other person. I hope you understand that great flaw. Um, because it, it is a massive flaw in medical studies. That's why mice studies are useful, because they use genetically identical mice. But when you do studies on people, everything's out the window, because people are super genetically different. Let's say you give one group something, you don't give it to the other group. For all you know, it's just because of that group's genetics. And, because, and they go, oh, but it's random. It's like, it's not random enough. So there you have it. The damage is going to show up more later in life because when you're young, your body can compensate or it can recover. But compensation, as it weans, means that the damage is going to, sh like, you're going to have much less function much quicker than if you weren't compensating. And if you had fully recovered, well, now you have less ability in the future to fully recover more. Hope you liked this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I got in the mood for this video after I started making it. Thought I wasn't in the mood, but it turns out I was. And check out the other videos. And you can also check out this bicep, which is still looking pretty good, despite gaining a decent amount of weight after the bodybuilding competition. I love seeing that separation there.